Hey everybody, welcome to Build Fly Go. So, we've just recently received the Tannis uh, preheat system. This is uh, a six cylinder engine preheat system. And we live in Wisconsin where it is cold for months and months and months of the year. <laughs> so, something like this, a preheat system like this, is crucial. Uh, engines go through incredibly accelerated wear if you start them or run them in general. Um, when the, uh, well, when the temperatures are low. Um, in particular, I, I look at CHTs, how I set the guidelines for myself. Um, basically below 50 degrees CHT, when I power up the avionics, I can see the CHT numbers. Below 50 degrees, I uh, usually am not comfortable starting. I'll, I'll uh, either plug it in for a preheat system like this or push it back into the hangar. I do keep the hanger at uh, 50 degrees, so it doesn't usually take very much to, to warm things up. I have my preheat system uh, usually on a, a switch, like a cell phone switch with an app, so that I can turn it on before I leave the house. But anyway, here's the paperwork, um, an STC, STC paperwork, so you can install this on certified aircraft as well. And the, you know, packaging list and a nice little sticker that you put on the, usually on the oil door or something like that. They also included the bracket kit, which is a set of Adele clamps um, for mounting the plug. Um, there's just a regular US plug here that you would wire up into the system and you would place it somewhere that's accessible so that you can plug your extension cord into this, right? This is fixed mounted on the airplane somewhere and you plug your extension cord into this and then it powers up the system. I believe uh, on RV-10s um, and usually on 540, I've seen them in bigger engines like this, I've seen them uh, on the um, cooling air intake, the big two big nostrils on the front of the cowling. Uh, it's sort of down low in there so you can plug it in. Um, on RV9, on the RV9 in particular, our other setup is inside the, just inside the oil door, um, but the oil door on the RV10 is higher up and in the middle and it's not terribly, uh, it's not a great location. Um, please take everything I say about this with a grain of salt. Uh, I haven't looked through the manual yet and uh, Tannis did uh, graciously offer to uh, talk to us before we did the install just to make sure that we did everything um, as a uh, to best practices. So we, I look forward to once we get the engine in a couple of months, I'm hoping a couple of months, crossing my fingers, um, we'll talk to Tannis about the install. So it comes with two of these uh, oil sump pads. Um, these get glued onto the oil sump um, for, uh, you know, for heating the oil to keep the, bring the oil up to temperature. There's two of those. I do believe some people put these on the oil cooler as well. Um, I haven't personally. Uh, I suspect maybe for much colder temps? I don't know. We'll look into it. We'll talk to Tannis and, and find out. Um, so two of those. And then these are the cylinder heaters. Uh, there's six of these, of course. And they're, let's see if we can get this to focus. Yep. They're, they're threaded. <laughs> so you replace one of the uh, valve cover screws uh, with this. It's threaded in the right way. And one of the first things I noticed opening this is these are Deutsche connectors. These are really good, um, nice connectors. Uh, I'm really happy when I get a product that they spent a, a little bit of money getting proper connectors for it. Um, it's always frustrating when it's, it's you know, cheapo plastic connectors that you're worried are going to fall apart. So these will not. These are real connectors. Um, what else do we have here? So there was eight of those. Um, there's some adhesive for the for the uh, oil heater pads, and then a ton of wire. There's an indicator. We should look at the manual and see where they recommend putting the indicator. Um, the wire has nice Deutsche. I'm really happy with this. <laughs> nice Deutsche connectors uh, on the harness. Looks like a little fuse block, a uh, bunch of zip ties. Uh, it's really I really like how the um, cylinder heaters are on individual connectors. So you can thread these in, you thread them in, you run the harness, and then you plug them in, right? Like it makes it much easier to install and to uh, do maintenance. Um, really happy with the setup. Uh, and again, thank you, thank you Tannis for helping us out and sending us a kit. We hope to get this installed in the next few months, uh, once the engine shows up, it'll be one of the, the first things um, to get installed because it's easy to, to route it up um, when the, the cowling is not on. And especially I want to get this done before the baffles get put in place. 
uh, permanently, right? I mean, we'll fit the baffles um, just to know where we can't run uh, some of these wires, but um, I'll probably install this before the baffles go, go in. Yep, so expect a much more detailed video of this install when the time comes. As usual, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon.